Yep, we are. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Bingo Watch. My name is Matt Bingo. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Welcome to part two in our Double Dare series. Tonight, we talk about Super Sloppy Double Dare, the second in the Double Dare series. This show debuted in 1987 and it was revived in 1989. Uh, let's see, I have a few fun facts here before we get started. Uh, this actually, Super Sloppy Double Dare, was the first game show to be taped at Nickelodeon Studios. I think it was. It definitely was the first one taped at Universal Studios. Uh, that was filmed from, and I can't even talk, I'm losing my mind. April and May of 1989. And keep in mind, this was an entire year before Nickelodeon Studios opened. We mentioned Nickelodeon Studios a little bit last week on the show. Uh, we'll mention it again probably next week. Um, and uh, let's see. There have been some uh, circulating tapes. Uh, Super Sloppy Double Dare, the first version in 87 was filmed in July of 1987. Probably began airing in September of 1987. Uh, once again, lasted in 1987 and 1989. Actually went on to win a Cable Ace Award. Uh, we'll mention more about the awards of the show, especially Super Sloppy, a little bit later on tonight. Uh, meanwhile, we have our three guests from last week, and we also have another guest here. Let's go ahead and introduce everybody here. That's undefined. Let's go meet them. Come on. Hello there, gentlemen. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good to have you people back again. Let's begin with the people who we had on last week's show. Hunter Dillon, back again. Hi. Justin Ray, is back as well. What's going on, Marty? Hey, how you doing? And yeah. Corey Lawrence is back again. <laughs> yep, and I got the thing ready as soon as you say the name. Yep, and we also have someone new tonight uh, who decided to join in our discussion, Andrew St. Clair. Welcome, Andrew. Hello. Hello. Uh, tonight, as I said a few, a few seconds ago, we will be talking about Super Sloppy Double Dare. And it just, there it is. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, this version had two revivals, I guess you can say. Two versions. One in 1987 and one in 1989. As I mentioned a few seconds ago to the viewers here, this was the first program videotaped on Nickelodeon at Universal Studios. It was not officially called Nickelodeon Studios until that opened in 1990. I thought it opened in 89. Mm-mm, 90. Nickelodeon Studios opened in 1990. So. And then, of course, we all know that closed in 2004. Sad. Sad. And then, of course, the Nick Hotel was around, I believe, in 2000. I believe 2000 to 2010, something like that. Again, sad. It's closed now. That was also in Florida. Anyways, um, let's get started with Super Sloppy Double Dare. And, uh, Corey, I'll let you have the floor first. Now, for Super Sloppy Double Dare, it was a revival of Double Dare because of the ratings were declining because Nickelodeon's flagship show at the start of it was Double Dare, but because of that children's game show coming out of the woodwork, it started to, uh, other game shows that were coming in started to collude the market for Double Dare, and they were losing their viewers to other kids' game shows. So they had, so they knew they had to do something in order to get the viewerships to come back. So they went back to the drawing board and decided to call it Super Sloppy Double Dare, meaning more mess, more fun, more money. That's exactly and, what they did. And it lasted for almost two full seasons. Mm -hmm. um, the first one was a short list spinoff from uh, 1987, uh, where it was filmed in New York. But uh, when it got picked up, though, um, it lasted for a two full seasons from 1987 to 1989 at uh, WHYY in Philadelphia. And we mentioned Philadelphia on last week's show as well, so... 
So Double Dare remained there at WHYY in Philadelphia when they uh, tra- transversed over to Super Sloppy. Mm-hmm. So um, it was only airing on weekdays uh, for weekends in 1987. It was a spinoff known as Super Sloppy with episodes to be aired on weekends. Yep. But also during that era um, uh, in New York, anytime a team takes a physical challenge, Mark would open up a little uh, mailbox right behind his lectern and draw a name out of there. And then Mark would announce the viewer's name. And should the team playing the physical challenge completed, the chosen home viewer would win an Etch-A-Sketch animator. If not, then the viewer still won a Double Dare t-shirt as a consolation prize. So, win or lose, they came out with something. Yep, they won something. So, But by the time 1989 came around, uh, they moved from New York, where they were filming the, or the short-lived spin-off, and then moved to WHYY in Philadelphia, where they remained there for most of the 89 syndicated version until... Nick Studios, before it was even Nick Studios slash opened in 1990, yep. they uh, were housed in one of the sound st- sound stages at Universal Air, yep. where it had messier and bigger physical challenges and always new obstacles for the obstacle course, which means uh, a bigger chance at making a bigger mess and more chances for Mark, Robin, and Dave to ham it up. Yes, if you know don't, what I mean, don't, yes. Don't, don't, don't forget Harvey. Oh, yes. And Harvey Harvey's. was integral for the entire show's run until his departure. John Harvey was an amazing man. He uh, really um, – there is a small story that I did hear from John Harvey. There was one time someone actually did get kicked out. Kicked out? Yep. From a, from a Double Dare taping. Uh, John Harvey was also the uh, warm-up guy for the show, for the audience, you know, keeping the kids uh, – uh, eager, energetic, and stuff, you know, while between breaks. And there was one that was just being a down and outright little punk, not having any of it and being a smart ass, pardon my French. Um, and yeah, Harvey wasn't having any of it. And needless to say, that person got kicked out of the building. So that was the only time that anyone ever really uh, uh, pissed off John Harvey. So, but I mean, Harvey really has a very good career. I mean, aside from announcing Double Dare, he was also the announcer for Finders Keepers for Wesley Year a lot of the for a lot of the run. He was also he was also the, the announcer for High for for History IQ, which Mark Summers also hosted. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. Which was a, and, 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 and that was on the History Channel. Yes, that was a very good show. Sad it only lasted for so long. Yeah, it didn't last too long. Yeah, but um, back on Super Sloppy, um, when they came to the WHYY Studios in Philly, yeah, Again. they were they were making bigger messes, uh, having a lot more fun than ever, and they were getting their viewers back from doing this retooling. Yep. Uh, what really made the show was was the camaraderie everyone had. They uh, all worked together. Um, one uh, stage crew member in the behind the scenes of Super Sloppy Double Dare put it best. It was like working in a hospital. You couldn't afford uh, an accident or a slowdown to happen because then everything is just going to halt from that stop down and it's just going to kill the flow. Yep, just like it did with the first taping of Double Dare Ever, which we mentioned on last week's show, where they had to do five retakes, if you remember of the last week's uh, show, of the original Double Dare. Of the fir- very first obstacle course. Very first because... obstacle course. Oh, Nightmare. Yeah, night- nightmare. Yes. nightmare. And that's why Nightmare was never used on the show again. Never has. Well, under that, under that name, no. They did use it uh, under, a different, under a few different titles, but it was still the same thing. Yes, but it wasn't as but they... much of a Nightmare. Yeah, they learned their lesson. Never, never bury. Nope. But um, for Super Sloppy, um, how they did the casting, they went around to different schools in the Philadelphia area or around the around the United States looking for energetic kids and everything. And sometimes they would have open casting calls or live tours. 
they were doing live tours for the show back then, if they I were. remember correctly. They were. So that's how they would always get their contestants, either from the live tours or from uh, doing casting in schools. Yes, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Nickelodeon also did the sweepstakes in the early 90s called uh, Nick Takes Over Your School, if anybody even yes, remembers that. Yes, they did that a lot. Well, they did that a lot during during the late 80s and early 90s. So we'll probably talk about um, that more later. So Yes. Yes. For Super Sloppy, um, and this was the way they did the show. Now, if I recall correctly, they did four shows per day to cover for an entire week. What they would do is, is they would do uh, one upfront game, which includes the first toss-up challenge and first half game. Then they would stop tape, change audience, and Mark would go backstage, change clothes, and it would be another day. They would do another uh, first half challenge of the show. and. Uh, they would do that four times over. Then they would do the second half, uh, you know, rotate audiences and everything like that every single time. Just so, you know, people wouldn't think, you know, it was the same thing every time. And that's how they did their taping schedule is that they would rotate every episode doing one each half, each half time. And then the second half each over and over. So it was a little complicated, but it it worked. Because, uh, like I said before, from the one stagehand's quote, if there was anything that ever went wrong, it would kill the flow, and then it would be hard to get that flow back. Yeah, definitely. But there was always the chance of, you know, an occupational hazard, you know, people slipping and falling all the time, but that's why they always had the precautions in place. Until uh, it happened one time, uh, during uh, the family double dare run, but that will be covered in uh, the next uh, next single week. watch next week. Yeah. For now, though, Super Sloppy Double Dare was really a headliner because it really showed us a lot of the classic obstacles, but uh, redone a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, they gave away a lot better prizes during that time, you know, trips to space camp or you know Florida or other <clears throat> other stuff. Yeah. And this mm -hmm. Aren't they something? Go ahead, Marty, for a couple yeah. seconds. Yep, they they had much better prizes. You can say, I guess you can really say that it was sort of like a nighttime version of Double Dare, although they had a syndicated version at the time as well, which we will also mention tonight. They also had a Double Dare version, and they also aired on Fox. That was back in 1988. It, it was just called Double Dare. I don't think it was part of the original run, though. But they did have That's true. an original run, which we mentioned last week. They also aired on Fox and in syndication in 1988-89. So. Uh, let me see. One second here. Uh, uh, as described in the 1988 Double Dare game book, I f I forget which show it was. I think I think it may have been Super Sloppy Double Dare. There was one team, according to what I'm looking at here, TV tropes. Uh, one team in particular won the main game with. A, at the time, record-breaking $750. Now, obviously, that's not the record anymore because of higher values on the later shows. For example, Twitter 2018, but we'll get to more on that and at some point down the line. Uh... Mm -hmm. Trying to, trying to remember if uh, Double Dare won a Cable Ace Award. I'm not sure. It may have. I, be I believe it did win a Cable ca cable Ace Award. I think it was 1989 it won. It was nominated twice in 1989 and 1993. Yep, it won. Yep, it did, it did win a Cable Ace Award. Uh, Double Dare won a Cable Ace Award in 1989 and 
person. Uh, they were they were doing shows. Uh, Funhouse, in particular. Uh, Mark uh-huh. had Mark had a uh, Mark had a Cable Ace Award, uh, which was just the one I mentioned, which was won in 1989. Uh, given a double, there prominently displayed on his podium, and he proudly declared, "And I quote." Funhouse doesn't have one of these. We do. Wow, in an episode of Super Sloppy. <laughs> I a, am back. In which a curse had, which had been placed on the show, Mark joked that perhaps Funhouse host J.D. Roth was responsible for the curse. Yeah. Oh, I in remember that. In the late that. 80s and early 90s, they always liked to take jabs at Funhouse. <laughs> they did. Well, well, I mean, Mark was kind of real. I mean, after all, it... It won a Cable Ace Award. Double Dare did in 89. Uh, if anyone's wondering, it lost in 93 to MTV's Lip Service. It lost in 1993. Uh, and was also nominated for a Daytime Emmy for Outstanding Directing in a Children's Series uh, in 1989. But I believe that lost as well. Let's check that. Standing directing children's programming. Did lose. It it lost to a tie. Three to one contact. Uh, Ozzy Alfonso the director and Shining Time Station. Matthew Diamond is the director. So it was nominated for an Emmy in during during the time of Super Sloppy. It, was, it won a Cable Ace and was nominated for a Daytime Emmy. Uh, wow. Yep, so it's it's had a it's had quite a quite a fair share of awards during that time uh, between 1987 mm-hmm. and 1989. Uh, even during the um, syndicated and Fox versions that they had during that time as well, they've had a lot of success. Even though neither of those lasted too long. Yeah, the Fox version was their attempt at Family Double Dare, but that fell apart though due to. Uh, a, I think it was a money dispute, if I remember correctly, or contract dispute, and uh, one of the two. And Double Dare elected to pull out for Fox because of it. Yeah, which was a shame. Really would have done a well small shame, but really they got a better better draw later on that we'll cover next week. Yep, yep, it sure did. And syndication, probably the same thing. Not necessarily a contract, but it just pulled out. Uh, mm-hmm. From syndication as well, I don't, I don't think it was the same now ordeal for on Super Sloppy. Sloppy. There were a lot of great episodes that occurred. Yes, yes. I mean they did really amazing with their theme episodes, even though they were sometimes short. Yeah. They really were great. The ones that really were good were the uh, ones that they did with the WWF at the time slash WWE. Mm. The Super Sloppy Mania fights that they did. Very nice, very nice. Those those were amazing. They had uh, uh, famed wrestlers at the time. God rest some of their souls. Bobby the Brain Heenan. Uh, yeah, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Mr. Perfect as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. They had them on there. Gorilla uh, Monsoon, I believe. Gorilla Monsoon. Yeah. Oh, that, that one was epic. Yeah. Yes. The one at the end there were Gorilla Dumped Bob... Bobby the Brain Heenan in the uh, pudding vat. That was just amazing. Oh, the yes. Mm-hmm. It was I, just I, I, like it was just like a big bomb went off. Yeah, that's probably why it was so successful. Although they did have a pilot for Celebrity Double Dare in 1987, that did not get picked up. Nor did the other pilot in 1987 as well. That they had one for either. Celebrity and non-Celebrity. Neither were picked up. Neither of them were. Both were hosted by. Uh, uh, Bruce pardon Jenner. me, uh, Bruce Jenner, Bruce Jenner, Jenner, who is now known as Caitlyn Jenner. Yes. Even though he did okay for it, it just wasn't drawing what uh, the camaraderie for the kids version was. Nope. Uh, they also did a celebrity version, a sort of celebrity episode in 1987 during the first season. It was, I believe, it was the Bon Jovi Bays versus the Footloose Fanatics. That was a celebrity episode in '87. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. But uh, few and far between the episodes, uh, I mean, Obstacles, too, really shined in that one. I think that was the first time they introduced the gumdrop of Super Sloppy. Probably. And that one was amazing. Mm-hmm. It had two different versions. The one that was known on Super Sloppy, the human gumball machine, where you had to stick the nickel in and spin the handle. Yeah. But um, uh, uh, witness accounts from a lot of the crew and kids that were on the show that had to go through the gumdrop, it was like nothing you ever experienced before, so... No. That's saying something alone. Yep. And it gave us a lot of other obstacles, including... Uh, Including Pickett, I think that premiered in Super Sloppy, didn't it? I believe it did. And uh, it became one of the best staples of Double Dare ever, and it still to this day holds up. Ever. Also, the tank uh, yes. became bigger and better in Super Sloppy. Yes, as we mentioned on uh, last week's show, they originally had a cardboard set. Oh, during that the, was during the run throughs mm -hmm. of the show. This was probably mid eighty six because they didn't start taping till September. This was probably early, early, early in the run. Mm -hmm. But they they had a cardboard set, and the tank was not very big. It was just an, it was just big enough to fit for styrofoam peanuts. Yeah, and balloons and balloons. But by mm -hmm. but by super sloppy, it grew bigger and bigger. Yep. But the one drawback, going back on that, during uh, the original show run, they made the worst mistake of their lives. During a week's worth of taping, they filled that thing, which held over three thousand gallons of baked beans. Oh. I think you mentioned that a little bit on last week's show. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, not pretty. Not it was not well. pretty at all because by the by the end of the week's worth of tapings, it was starting to fester from all the hot lights and the stench. Uh, yeah, was not pleasing. A lot of a uh, a lot of the crew and Mark uh, said because <laughs> it was so bad they had to literally get a porta duty uh, driver to bring a truck to the studio and vacuum it out. Oh God! So they had to literally have a shitmobile come and vacuum it out. I I, yes. I I recall that actually. That that that's dang. That, that's dang. Yeah. yeah, and the bad mistake was is that they didn't have a draining system in in place. Nope. At the time, so by the time that they came around for the second season, it was so bad in the studio that everyone started breaking out and pustering hives and other stuff. Yeah. But. By the time the show came around for Super Sloppy and stuff, they learned their lesson and had a had a dream system in place, so it would be easier to clean up. Yeah. And less time on the cutting room floor to edit. Yep. So a lot uh, of the time, they did feature the crew that cleaned the stage up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, speak about that. Was, was there an episode where I I, I want to say there was an episode? I I remember it was over there Super Sloppy, but it was said. No Reebok, no socks. That was the original run. Original. Okay, I'm sorry about that. That was them. That was them poking fun at Hawaii Five O. I've got Reebok and no socks. Yep. <laughs> and needless to say, Day Shikiar really hammed it up. Yep. The line he delivered during the uh, tank when Mark had him just uh, uh, demonstrated, yeah. which was just filled yep. with water. I got I got no Reebok and no socks. Yeah, Mark just lost it. <laughs> I know. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yep. There was the cast and crew. Yeah, it was just amazing. Go ahead, Mori. Yeah. Uh, there was one other obstacle course during uh, Super Sloppy. Uh, if I can find it again, there it is. It's called Spud Splat. Uh, Spud. Spud Splat. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it, it was like the, it was like sun canal, but but it was filled with mashed potatoes. Yeah, it was a yes. teeter totter basically, and your partner had to sit on the one end to lift you up to the top, and then when the partner went back down, uh, yeah, it went <laughs> right into the potatoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yep, this was during the 87 run and once again in the Fox run of the Wadera. But it didn't Definitely. last into the family run, which will be nope. covered in another one. Yep. But a uh, lot of the obstacles that we did see, though, did graduate up to the Fox run and uh, family, family Double Dare run. Day. Yeah, uh, yeah, three runs, but you know, uh, one of the, one of the, uh, 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 wasn't, uh, uh, you, you, you know, what we wanted to ask is, I think, of is, uh, uh, I'm not sure it was Super Star original, but, uh, Lake Double Dare. Oh, yes, Lake Double Dare. That one was a good one, but I don't yeah. think that one came around until, uh, Family. Until soup until a super sloppy because yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the 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 original version was 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 so small it, it, it was literally go from one side to the other like, on a raft it was yes. it wasn't it wasn't until family doll day which we'll talk about next week that became big but we'll talk about it next week so what yep. listen for us next week folks you'll you'll hear what we're talking about yeah yep. the super mm. sloppy run of Lake Double Dare though was. Was about oh god, how big around? Not that big. That yeah, much, it I wasn't guess. that no. big, but they did get a lot more use out of it half the time for either physical challenge use or uh, for the obstacle course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. I think the biggest uh, the biggest uh, mess that was ever made with that was when uh, Mark and Harvey had to run the course and the show one time while oh, oh, oh. Robin and Dave announced and. They had a famous uh, person host the show for a one-off. Uh, Hollywood Squares '86 alumni Jim Jim Boy, which resulted yeah, it was in versus Harvey Day that day. Yeah, which resulted in one of the most funniest comedic lines that I think ar happened around that time. But if it had to happen this in this day and age, uh, yeah, it yeah. probably wouldn't have happened at all because I think. The media censors probably would have not allowed it, mm. because when it uh, came up to the obstacles, uh, Jim was just hamming it up big time, you know, just always lightly bopping you on the helmet and stuff. It was either Mark or Harvey, you know, being a silly smart aleck. And by the time I think it was what like obstacle five, wasn't it, Marty? Something like that. By the time obstacle five came around, uh, Harvey, Mark, and Jim, uh, Jay Bullock were just yucking it up, making making one-liners and stuff every which way possible. And by the time Obstacle 5 came around, it was, uh, I think it was the Blowhorn, they called it at the time. Something like that. Um, anyway, it was the Obstacle with the little buttons on the top and on the sides, the little bivalve buttons, and you had to hit the right one to get a flag uh, to shoot out. And while uh, uh, Jim was explaining it, uh, he said to Mark, and what do you call these things? Vows. And he said, that's right, and you're going to punch one of these vows, and a fag's going to spew, I mean, a flag's going to spew out. He basically had a slip of the tongue and accidentally said fag on air. Oops. Well, that that one was better known as horn blower, by the way. Horn as blower. horn blower. Wow. That resulted in one of the most funniest bloopers in Double Dare history ever, aside from the little man in the boat. Oh, God. That one I think was the was was number one though. Obviously, that was number one. Which we didn't cover. I think we should right quick. We should during the during the original run. Um, they were joking around with this little toy boat guy that had a little yellow double dare shirt on and stuff. Uh -huh. And he was rowing in some in one of the obstacles and stuff. And Mark was just yucking around with it. Oh, it was a tank, and it was filled with some uh, colored gack water and some. Uh, whipped cream gack islands and he was like and so it's basically double dare and we're just gonna you know like he drowned the drowned the little thing and he just like just started saying help me and that kind of stuff and then <laughs> out of yeah, nowhere yeah. he he just started busting into into laughter randomly and just couldn't quit uh, for the rest of the obstacle explanation no, no, what, what the weird part about it is it came back and if it came, that, that that tank was also number two, it came it came back for number four, number six, and number eight. By the time uh, number six came around, Mark had a cup of water and actually did a spit take on camera, losing it. Oh my gosh! Yeah, 
Uh, let's, let, let's see. Uh, Blue Paste Special. It was a pizza slice. I remember that one. Uh, the Suspension Bridge was number eight. Mm-hmm. But I can't recall number six. Uh, number six was where Mark... Lo- no, wait. Slime, no. Slime Canal. Slime Canal. That's it. Slime Canal, Slime yeah. Canal. And Mark lost it by the time... Uh, by the time Blue Plate Special came around, Harvey asked him, you are right, Mark? And he just, like, literally said in this little tinny high voice, okay. <laughs> we're literally losing it. We're on the Blue Plate Special. <laughs> we're on the Blue Plate Special. <laughs> and, and that, I think that was the one time that I saw that Mark literally just killed me, too, because his laugh is just so infectious. Yeah, like mine. Uh-huh. You don't so, hear Mark access that high laughter that he used to very much anymore. No. But he still does, though, on occasion. Okay. If you uh, catch him off guard, he will lose it. Yeah. But uh, after all of that happened, and to this day, he still has that little prop, the little man in the boat. He still has it. Really? He still has it, yes. Wow. Honest to God. Wow. Um, now back on the on the little man in the boat thing, obstacle eight. Um, he pulled a three sixty uh, when it was a suspension bridge. Um, he did, no one expected it. He ran to the back black curtain by the by one of the doors where Robin and Dave come out for the physical challenges. Grabbed a hold of it and said, "And behind curtain number three, we have Carol Merrill pulling it open and revealed the." the stagehand with the camera behind the invisible black screen. And when he came back, he saw the little man in the boat got placed there and just then died with laughter. Oh, no. Yeah. So, yeah. They, uh, knew when to inject humor and play around with Mark or try to get the show as funny as they could. There is another moment that happened during, uh, during Super Sloppy, they uh, uh, did an Isle of Lucy uh, special. Mm-hmm. And by the time uh, the obstacle course came around, uh, Mark was acting like uh, Ricky doing the Babalu thing with the little bongos. And in comes Robin out of nowhere, wearing a Lucy wig and pulls the famous line, Ricky, <laughs> And Mark just lost it. <laughs> <laughs> That I never expected Robin Morella to actually do. We are so getting on to good YouTube when we were watching all these episodes tonight. I swear to God, this yeah. is so good. <laughs> that, that one was just will, too good. We'll find these bloopers and we will watch them all tonight. After yep. the show. Without so, a doubt. God. Yeah. Super Sloppy really was the forefront before Nickelodeon launched. Mm-hmm. And Nickelodeon needless to say, Studios. it kept the show, it kept Nickelodeon Studios and the show going right into the beginning of the golden age where that's when Nickelodeon really started to shine. Oh yeah, that's for sure. More game shows and technology was starting to advance big time around that time. Yeah. I think between competitors, I think really the two best competitors in my opinion were Family Double Dare and Nick Arcade. Yeah. Which, Um, speaking of Nick Arcade, that should be a subject for one of your future shows, Marty, because I could talk that shit up all day. It will. It will I be. love that show. Yeah, because there is a lot we can cover with that. We may mm-hmm. have we may have like two or three episodes where we'll talk about just nineties Nickelodeon shows. Like the golden because, age. The golden age because Uh the golden, golden age, age is coming back, people. It's coming back. I mean Double Dare's coming but Double Dare's back, Rugrats are coming back. Although, not too sure about that, honestly. Not sure Rock Goes that. Modern Life is also coming back. Is it really? Yes, it is. I did not. It know. was announced for a revival, too, right, Justin? Well, it's supposed to be a one hour television special that is officially made. It's just waiting on a date. Just, mm. They finished it as of 2017, and it will, it will air this year. Sometime it's just Sometime. they are keeping it very, very tightly guarded, uh, secret right now for some reason. Yes, because um, 
there has been some changes at Nickelodeon that a lot of people don't know about, but a lot of us that try to keep in touch with media and uh, good sources know already. There has been a presidential change in power at Nickelodeon. The new president has uh, admitted he loves a lot of the old Nickelodeon game shows, and Double Dare was one of them because Mark came to the new president of Nickelodeon wanting to get it back on the air, and he uh, he or she, whoever it is, greenlit it oh, for a full 40-episode run, which has not even yet ended. Oh, it hasn't and ended yet. Really? As, oh, far as, no. I, as far as I know... They're far from done. I mean, they've only done maybe like Golly. 25 episodes 25. at best. So they got yeah. about another 15 to go. So probably about three weeks or so ish. Yeah. At, at yeah, least three, at least three weeks least more three worth of shows. Let's get back to the topic here for a minute here. Uh, you, you, you're talking about episodes here. Um, Yep, yeah, there, there, there was one episode where everything was backwards. Yes. Oh, backwards day. That backwards was from the day. Florida run. It was backwards day. And backwards even, day. even Mark Summers had, had his, 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 uh, his suit on backwards. They guys had their shirts on backwards. We don't know about their pants. Yep. Even. But yeah, er, 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 everything was done backwards. So instead of countdowns going down from, from top to zero, they went from zero to the top. Not uh, number whatever, whatever it was. Probably yeah, and the first obstacle was the grand prize. The last obstacle was the first. But, and they they, they had the H one in the obstacle course as well. So that was that was really special. Yes, I think during the eighty eight season, this I don't think this was during Super Sloppy. This was in the era of it, though. They did a three D episode in nineteen eighty eight as well. Oh yeah, three 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 D double there. Three D double yeah. there. I don't know if that really did work or not, but I don't know hey, either. But they really, uh, they really went nut, uh, nuts with the with the three D stick and everything. So, hey, you know some uh, some ideas really uh, were really good. I don't know if this was one of them though. Yeah. It's just my personal uh, take on it. Yeah, uh, that 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 one was uh, was double day. It was not super sloppy. That was the original run. Correct. Oh, no, wait. Uh, Super Sloppy had two seasons. It was from 87 to 89, so I would say that was probably the uh, 87 version, which was from New York. Yeah. No, no, no. no, no, no. I'm looking at it right now. Say no. The 3D episode was was just called Double Dare. It was not called Super Sloppy. It was, was, I think it was regular Double Dare. Okay. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, that was was regular Double Dare. Oh, well. it, It was between 87 and 89, so it counts. Um... But, um, they, they yeah, also, the 3D episode I don't think took off well. Nah. They also nah. did, they also did, no, they also did a couple of specials during season two, the 89 run of Super Sloppy. They did a Groundhog's Day special, which the first question was about Hollywood Squares, by the way, which was still airing at the time, which went off the air in June of that year. They yeah. Also, they also did so a, some shows were poking fun. Yep. For, uh, fun house. Um, they also did a President's Day special as well. Uh, oh yes, I remember nine. another special that they did was a breakfast day special. Did they really? Yeah, they did. They did a breakfast day special. It's, I believe, it's on either YouTube or uh, uh, Daily, uh, Motion. Daily uh, Motion, which I'm willing to bet it's over there. Probably. But yes, this was from the Florida run before Nickelodeon Studios opened up. Um, they did a breakfast day special where um, the show started off with Mark and Harvey faking being asleep in on the uh, obstacle course stage four. Oh jeez! Because by the time the uh, Florida run came around, they had a bigger they had a bigger stage to operate on. So that's when they started using the drain system that was on the main stage, and then they had one that was on the obstacle stage. So it was two completely different levels together. Right. right. Going back to the uh, backwards day episode, incidentally, two of the contestants on that episode, Clegg and Scott, were actually on the VHS. This was the '89 VHS of. How to throw a double dare party? Yep. I got, I, 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 I got to run. I got to run. Turn everyone in there. I got to run. Sorry. Bye. Um, Bye. Yeah. Um. No. Um. Uh, there were. There was also another episode where all four contestants were on that same tape. That was the Be Kind to Animals Day 
uh, Chris and Nature of Two Lap Crew, and the Looser Equality of Chad and Dee Dee. All four of those kids were on the How to Throw a Double Dare Party tape. Uh, mm hmm. Which, which is a fantastic tape, by the way. I think I've yeah, you could probably still find a copy here or there on the Am Am eBay. Um, Amazon or eBay. One of the two. One and the there two. were a few others behind the scenes for Double Dare and the, Super Sloppy, if I believe. The inside scoop. The inside scoop, yes. Yeah, one second. Yeah! Hang on, stop tape for a second. Okay, here we are. Sorry for the sudden tape cut there. Uh, let's get back to where we were. So we got about 15 minutes left. So we still got we still got a little bit of good time. A uh, couple of the contestants from the 1989 episodes of Super Sloppy Double Dare were actually on the VHS How to Throw a Double Dare Party, which Wait. is on Amazon and eBay. Or did we mention that? I lost count. There it is. Look. I see it. <laughs> oh my god. We'll we'll mention this off air. Um right. Uh, a couple of the contestants they had they even had a tribute to Wink Martindale actually in an episode of Super Sloppy. Oh yeah, during the Florida run. Yep. Yep, sadly enough I don't think Wink was hosting anything at that time. I don't uh... think I think he might have been hosting Headline Chasers. No, Headline Chasers was before this. Headline Chasers aired in 85. And the, and the episode aired in 89. So, this was this was after Headline Chasers. At the time, I think he probably was hosting something at least. Something. Because he had just finished up his... Seven year run on Tic Tac Note by the time he switched over to uh, Headline Chasers. And uh, don't forget about High Rollers. High Rollers 8788. It sounded like he just finished that up. Uh, even though it only lasted one season. We'll talk about High Rollers in another episode as well. Uh, but yeah, they did a lot of crazy episodes uh, for a Super Sloppy Double in 8789. Um, of course, we mentioned the 3D one, the backwards episodes, the, uh, I forgot what they were called already. They did a Halloween episode, of course. Marty? That's, yeah. Look in the you-know-what chat right quick. Folks, don't look. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Wow. We've, we've gone dark in the studio, folks. Uh, <laughs> what was it called? Oh, yeah. Super Slop of Mania. That was probably one of the best episodes we mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let's see. Favorite episodes of Super Sloppy Double Deer. Uh, Corey, your favorites. Uh, favorite Super Sloppy episodes? I would have to say the Super Slop of Manias. And, um, also... I would probably have to say the uh, curse, uh, curse day and backwards day. Oh yeah, the curse day, the whole cable ace of war thingy, which we mentioned earlier in the show. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm that one, I think, really uh, set the bar. Yeah, it did. Ooh, that happened. Um, Why don't you just puke? <laughs> that was a bit of a puke burp. Oops. Gross. That was <laughs> that was caught on tape. Okay. Um, <laughs> nothing we can do about that one, folks. That's staying in. Uh, Savagery, not afraid. Not afraid. Yep. Yep. Let's see. Yep, if you want to check out the How to Throw a Double Dare Party, I believe it's on YouTube. No, the, the, uh, the, no, both the How to Throw a Double Dare Party and the, uh, Inside Scoop are both on YouTube. But we'd rather you get the VHS tapes. It's better. Yep, better quality. It's just better. Better quality. And it's fun. Mm hmm. That is if you have a VHS player. Like, or you could just convert it to DVD. You could. 
you could convert to DVD if you would wish. Which honestly, uh, that's too might, costly. That's true. It is too costly, but it's but it might be worth it. It's it's not that costly if you if you do vice versa though. So. Mm -hmm. Yep, and they also did Stupid Hat Day. Oh god, like, that one. Ugh. And then the one question neither team answered on that same episode. How many ankles has Michael J. Fox had? Neither team got that. Mm-hmm. How? 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 How are they not? Don't do drugs. And if you do, do it for you. That's saying in two. Um, see you again. later. Uh, let's see. Uh, anything else you want to talk about, with Super Sloppy, or if, or is that it? Well, for Devil Dare, I mean, Super Sloppy anyway. A uh, Super Sloppy. The obstacles were really, really a mess. Well done. Yeah, we're, we're a lot more messy. <laughs> Yep. But they learned their lesson after the baked beans incident. Never do that again. Never, ever do that again. Yes, a lesson for all you budding uh, uh, Double Dare uh, crew members to be. Never use baked beans. Never. Never, never use baked beans. Don't do it. They do Water, anything. whipped cream, that's fine. Absolutely. Or styrofoam peanuts, balls, whatever. Just never bake beans. I know everybody's laughing at the term balls out there. Yeah, I know you are. Um, I know I know you dirty people out there. Uh, yeah, we got an eye on you. We got an eye on you. Even though you can't see us, we have an eye on you. Oh, God. Favorite obstacle during the WHYY in uh, Florida run? I would probably... I, yeah, because they had two different runs. Right. The WHYY run in Philly, and then the Florida Super Sloppy run. Florida one in 89. Mm-hmm. I would probably say mine was uh, both Philly and Florida because of the fact they had the gumball machine and also the one-ton human hamster wheel. Oh, yeah, the famous one-ton hamster machine. That one. That, that one's still being used today, actually. Yeah, and instead of it counting up numbers now, now, it counts up in slime. Oh, fine. But it doesn't spew, though. It doesn't spew. Which it should, tear. Yes. It should. Just, mm -hmm. to, give that, like, just to give that extra mm, you know. That but little, Mount little St. Double Dare, though, has gone through some changes. Oh, yeah. It, that definitely has gone through a lot of changes. Mm-hmm. Yep, and I and I did see last Thursday night's episode. Not saying because we'll mention it in a couple weeks here, but um, yeah, the uh, but, new yeah. revamp for the uh, Mount Saint Double Dare that has it, gone through a lot of changes. Yeah, originally it didn't spew anything at all. Nope. So it was just like really super easy, but by the time the uh, sloppy run came around, they learned their lesson, and yeah, they uh. Yeah, no, but I think like a little a little slime spewer in there. I think but so. by the time the Florida run came around, then they uh, changed it again. Yep, they did. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Um, and now I can say this at least, but it will be covered more in uh, the uh, current era run when we talk about it on the Bingle Watch. Yeah, in a it uh, in a couple weeks. Um, when you mention its name now, it'll uh do a little uh, air below in anger and also uh yes it'll uh, spew a river of slime when you get near it now yes yes it will so i think great. the the new changeover really uh, makes it a little bit more hard to get up now yes but at least it gives it that little bit of a challenge yeah because but for those of you that don't know they do operate under a budget they do just like all game shows they operate under a budget Mm-hmm. Unlike that's a, why you never unlike us here, we don't operate under budget. But that's another yeah. story. Mm-hmm. That's why. You hardly saw a lot of wins a lot of the time. Or or some of the time you did see wins. Very split they had second to, wins. Oh. Yeah, they had to balance out the budget between wins and losses in order to, you know, 
not go over. Right. It was the same thing for it was the same thing for uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple. They also had a had a budget. They yep. had to balance. Could only afford to give out so many grand prizes per episode. So right, they gave away prizes, not the grand prizes though. Yeah, so yep. it was hard, but that was just because they had to control the budget. Right. Nothing, nothing against winning, but... There's got to be losses, though. There's got to be losses. <laughs> so, um... Yes. On uh, Super Sloppy, I think probably between, Flor uh, between Philly and Florida Run, I would say the Florida Run looked a lot better on camera. That and the sheer fact, though, they changed the uh, way the clock operated, too, because it was, uh, it now used to sp spin around on this little pedestal. Right. Which I, which I thought was a cool little touch. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. But, uh, what would you guys say was the biggest mess between Philly and Florida run? Ooh, that's a good question. That's tough, honestly. For me, it was the tank slash, uh, uh, putting that. Oh, yeah. Because if you guys remember from Super Slop Mania, where it was, uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan versus, uh, what was the Gorilla Monsoon? Something like that. That one, that one was the perfect ending there, where Bobby got dumped right into the putting vat head first and just went, like, splat. Yep, Bobby the Brain Heenan versus Gorilla Monsoon. And Gorilla, needless to say, won yeah. in that one because <laughs> if you dump a, how, I God only dread how heavy Bobby was at the time, but with his build and stuff like that, yeah, he made a big mess when he went face first. Yeah, he did. He so, did. if you had if you had to choose, Marty, what would you pick? I'd probably I probably agree with you there. I'd probably say the tank. All because except, all except for the baked beans, that was a mess. Uh, yeah, no, no baked no, beans. No but baked beans. Whipped cream, water, that, that kind of stuff. Slime? That was. Slime oh yeah, I remember they filled it with slime one time. Yeah, they did. That one, I think probably. <laughs> what what was that? Was that during the Philly run or Florida run? Uh, what the slime? The slime tank, yeah. That might have been during the Florida one. I forget. I'll have to go back. Hmm. I would only assume everything slime related was done in Florida. Probably. Yeah. That yeah, right. because they they had a bigger sound stage, so they could get away with uh, a lot making more. a lot more messes. Yay! Because for those of you that don't know, um. They uh, did a lot of everything in studio with their own kitchen. Yes. So, and this stuff was uh, post-dated food. So, in reality, people they were never wasting any of it. No, and we mentioned this last week as well, as well as the slime last week as well. Yes. Yes. The slime was handmade too. Um, yes. for all the whipped cream pies and everything else they used, they used like this big industrial Hobart mixer. That I think was what, what like uh, twenty uh, gallons worth there. So that was at least uh, a lot that they used, depending on the prop they used or if they needed pies and stuff. So a lot of that was made fresh, um, so it wasn't wasted. They also used Hershey's chocolate. Of course. Hershey, uh, Hershey of Philadelphia was a big sponsor of Super Sloppy Double Dare. Especially during the 87 run. I mean, after all, it was filmed in Philadelphia at that time. Yep, Hershey, Pennsylvania, so. PA. So they got a big donation from Hershey uh, Corporation for using their chocolate in the show. Yeah. Um, what else here? The, most of the stuff that you saw was also just, like, colored water and other stuff like that. But, yeah, everything that they made was either made of sugar glass or other stuff. Yeah. So, um, you know, like those <laughs> giant eggs that you saw? <coughs> yeah. Those that were filled with gack and other stuff, those are were made from sugar glass. Hmm. 
That's mm -hmm. why they're able to break so easy. But uh, it's kind of hard to do that without it breaking on you when you got to make stuff like that because you got because it's very prone to breaking if you don't cook it the right way. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm All right, go ahead and uh, discuss something, Hunter. You've been quiet most of this time. Yeah, I know. I what would you say I was your change. what your best between the Philly run and uh, Florida uh, Florida run? I'd have to say it was a tie, really, because the Florida run looked good, but of course the the a little bit of words English. Um, the Florida the, the Philadelphia run had its fair share of good stuff too. Mm -hmm. yep. Both had good sets, good music, and the like. Of course. So I really can't choose between the two. Mm. And it's hard. That is hard mm. between the two. <sighs> yep. Anyway, go ahead, uh, Marty. Um. Yeah, that's that's really tough for me. I think it's a tie for me as well because, you know, going going to Florida and film that was huge. Even though even though the Nickelodeon Studios was not open until 1990, and we'll talk about 1990 on next week's show for fam for Family Double Dare next week on the show. And uh, it was it was just really it was kind of bold that they did that because they'd been filming in. Uh, in Philadelphia since the beginning and moving to Florida I think that was kind of a big move I mean it is it is a much bigger sound stage more room to get messy and stuff but mm -hmm. but like you said Philadelphia's had its good share as well so that's a tie for me as well very close though very very close um <laughs> I think we've gone over the hour mark here. Any anything you guys want to say? Final thoughts about Super Sloppy Double Dare? Oh God! Anything good about Super Sloppy Double Dare to uh, close it up? Yeah. I would say, mo most uh, admittedly, the jokes and stuff that they did, I think, were the really good key points of the show. Because between the theme shows and all the different little uh, quirks that they had. Mark Summers and the crew really had it on point because in this day and age, you, you can't really get away with doing something without, you know, uh, being scrutinized about it or getting chewed out if you say the wrong thing. Right. But, but back then, it was just, like, really relaxed, you know, and they got away with a lot that it, uh, probably make people's heads spin these days. Ah, people mm -hmm. these days, isn't it great? Uh, it's not really not really a bad thing. I'm trying to put, put it in in terms. I know. But... But you know, if people really didn't understand that kind of dry humor back then, it it just wouldn't connect. Right. But uh, uh, but a lot of us being '80s and '90s babies, you know. Uh, Except for me, I was born in 2000. Yeah, so you grew up a Double Dare 2000. Barely. So um, you know that kind of uh, dry humor and stuff was a was a funny thing, but like I said, in this day and age, no. you can't really get away with uh, doing that kind of stuff without the uh, media grilling you if you do the wrong thing. Yeah. Yep. It's sad, it's sad to say people, but it's just a facet of life, you know? Things change. Things have changed over the last right. 30 years. But, with it being back on the air, the jokes and sticks are really flying because, I mean, Liza is really a good a good choice because fantastic. she's, she's perky and she really knows how to ham it up with Mark like a uh, uh, Harvey and uh, uh, Mark used to do back then. Oh, we yeah. see that camaraderie happening now today still. Yep. Anybody else have anything to say about Super Slot before we sign off here? I don't have anything really. You don't? Justin, anything? No. I, I think are, everybody are, are, has already said all that they need to say, honestly. Right. We've covered uh, up. Hey, 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 everyone, I'm back. 
long bag. We're just about to yeah. finish up here. Uh, I feel like I honestly feel like Super Slappy Double Dare really saved Double Dare because like because like, like Corey said at the beginning of the show here tonight, uh, the ratings <laughs> are starting to dip down because other game shows like Finders Keepers and Think Fast and, like, and, and Think Fast think were starting fast. to clue the market, and they had to do something in order to get their uh, viewership back. So and they that's did. when they went back and retooled. And look what happened. Now now it's one of the most popular Nickelodeon shows of all time, if not mm -hmm. the most popular. Indeed. indeed. And, and people will always remember that show for what it was. And Fun what, and, and, what it and really sloppy. And what, yep. sloppy. And, and what it is three decades later. Still slop. Still slop. Yep. And I really have to uh, throw this name out there because he was a key integral part of making sure this show is great. Pr uh, one of the producers, uh, Mandel Elogan, he is really great. He works with Nickelodeon, and he's such a perky gentleman. Yeah. Producer of the current version, but which we'll get to in about maybe three weeks from now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three weeks. Let's see. Yep, yep, three weeks. Yep. Uh, next week we talk about Family Double Dare and their big 1993 Tournament of Champions and the end of the original era of Double Dare. That should be interesting. That will all take place next week. Again, big special thank you to my guest tonight, Andrew St. Clair. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Hunter Dillon. Justin Ray. And, yeah, I apologize for being so quiet all through the evening. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And Corey. But you did give us some good contributions here. Yeah, good contributions. And, rem good and remember, folks, we're running short on time, and until we see you again next time, don't join eat, us again for... Don't you double join us go away. Join us for another Mondo Gak attack on another Double Dare. Bye-bye. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll be back. Yep. Uh, as Harvey said, don't you double dare go away because we'll be right. I can't even talk. We'll be right back here again next week. Next week, we talk about Family Double Dare and the end of the original Double Dare. Well, not I, would, I shouldn't say as we knew it because it's still, it's still going very well today. But the end of the original Double Dare era. We're talking 1986 to 1993. And we'll also talk about the transition to Nickelodeon Studios at Universal Studios Florida. Just have to finish that quote there. Um, thank you to all my guests tonight. Andrew St. Clair, Hunter Dillon, Justin Ray, and Corey Lawrence. Hopefully they'll all be back next week.